Let's bring in an all-star team to help break down these major developments. Anna Palmer, Politico's senior Washington correspondent and co-author of Politico's playbook, Brett McGurk, worked on sensitive diplomatic missions across the Middle East during the last three presidential administrations. And Michael McFaul served as the U.S. ambassador to Russia. Ambassador McFaul, I must go to you first. I had a sleepless night thanks to you. I was watching the 11th hour. When these text messages first became public, you were shocked, you were rattled, something I have never seen before. Now that we're almost a day later, how are you absorbing all this? Well, I was. Thanks for staying up and watching. Um, it was shocking to me. It was outrageous because um, in a couple of ways. Number one, it just confirms that there was not just one phone call where the president, you know, the president sometimes says one-off things that they pull back. This was a, a campaign over many months to try to make this quid pro quo happen. And, and by the way, I just want to say something. Even if there wasn't a quid pro quo, the president of the United States asking the president of Ukraine to get dirt on his political opponent, even if he wasn't offering something in return, is also wrong. But the texts were crystal clear that it was there. And moreover, it wasn't just President Trump and his, you know, other Ukrainian envoy, Rudy Giuliani, doing this. There were members, Mr. Volker and Mr. Sondland, were intimately involved in trying to make this quid pro quo happen. And so much so that they were jamming the Ukrainians to put it on the record. If you read the text, they're saying, no, you have to say it on the record. And you can tell the Ukrainians are pulling back and say, well, maybe you should say on the record that we get the Oval Office meeting before we do that. That's obviously a quid pro quo uh, being uh, negotiated. And I find it deeply troubling, A, that the president did it, and B, that he had a lot of help here. You're a former diplomat. Have you ever been asked to do anything like this? No, of course not. I worked five years for President Obama. Uh, we did quid pro quos to defend and advance American national interests all the time. That's part of diplomacy. But never was I asked to do a personal favor for President Obama on anything, let alone uh, helping him with his re-election campaign. Brett, diplomatic efforts now take place on text message. Is that new? Is that rare? Or is this the world we're living in? Um, I think that's the world we're living in. I mean, things move pretty fast. But the, I, I just, look, Mike is absolutely right. I mean, the text mes messages here are uh, incredible. And what does not surprise me is that Ambassador Bill Taylor, he's someone that I know uh, quite well. He's a Vietnam veteran. He's a he's an experienced diplomat. I was on the ground with him in Iraq in 2004. I served with him in the State Department. I'm at least issues that he is throwing a flag here over a series of weeks saying this is this is crazy. And uh, I think he's really standing up for the Constitution. He's taken the oath to the Constitution multiple times throughout his life. Um, and he's saying this is wrong. And he was George W. Bush's ambassador in Ukraine. So, you know, he knows something about these issues. And he's the one interfacing with the Ukrainians, who I think are telling him, look, we don't really want to be involved in this. Like, what is going on here? So those are really the most important uh, messages that I saw. All right. Well, then tell me this, Brett, because the president is saying it's all about fighting corruption. Are you aware of any efforts uh, that this administration is putting forth around fighting corruption besides what we're talking about here? No, this whole thing is so crazy. I mean, look, I, I really try to be nonpartisan. I've served for Democrats, Republicans, um, never seen anything like this before. And President Trump was asked today, have you ever asked for an investigation of someone that was not uh, a political opponent? And he said he couldn't answer that. So this is this is all uh, boils down to the fact that uh, Joe Biden is running for president. He's the leading contender right now in the Democratic nomination. And now the record is quite clear. So, I mean, as we talked the other day, Stephanie, there's really one issue here. Is it OK for a president, any president, to ask a foreign government to help him gain advantage in an upcoming uh, presidential campaign election? And the answer there is no. And you quoted, I think, uh, Mitt Romney earlier. I mean, he clearly has said that this is uh, deeply troubling and wrong. And it's just, it's clear as day. Republican, Democrat, no president should ever do this. It is a violation of the most fundamental values uh, of our country, going all the way back to everything the framers were saying, to George Washington's farewell address about the danger to our republic of foreign interference in our political system. Um, this is just fundamental and elementary, and now it's very clear for everybody to see. Uh, I actually have Mitt Romney's quote in front of us. He sent it out via tweet. When the only American citizen President Trump singles out for China's investigation is his political opponent in the midst of a Democratic nomination process, it strains credulity 
to suggest that it is anything other than politically motivated. By all appearances, the president's brazen and unprecedented appeal to China and to Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden is wrong, and it is appalling. Anna, I I'm willing to break my rule and use the word unprecedented, which says something about today. But beyond this tweet, what's Mitt Romney doing about it? And tell me what else the, other, the rest of the Republican Party members of the Republican Party on the Hill are saying, if not in public, behind closed doors. I think what you're hearing is a lot of silence, actually. I, there has not been a lot of Republicans who've been willing, certainly not to go as far as Mitt Romney has gone there. But just in general, I think they have been trying to keep very quiet. They are probably benefiting, frankly, from the fact that it is a two-week recess. Republicans are back home, so they're not being faced with the Washington press corps who would be following them in droves, asking them all of the questions that you've been talking about. But Mitt Romney is a lone soldier right now. The question is really going to be, he is... He, this is as far as he's gone. I think the question is going to be, what does he do next? This is, was a tweet. Uh, you know, does he come back and, and, and does he side with Democrats on this? You know, is he going to call for hearings? Is he going to actually press for an investigation or is it just a statement? And what do some of these other Republicans in some of these swing state, uh, you know, states, whether it's Cory Gardner in Colorado, Susan Collins in Maine and others, do they start to feel pressure on this, you know, on the political side of things? Things as well. Well, you, Anna uh, Politico, is calling are, ca are calling these the smoking texts. I mean, that's a big statement. Republicans knowing that the smoking texts are out there, and they're not saying much. That doesn't move the needle for them. I think it, it, we will not know until they get back into town. I think it's a lot easier for them to stay quiet right now. Uh, you know, a lot of senators have, have stayed very quiet, but even House members today, I think, are unusually quiet. Some of the president's defenders are having a hard time figuring out exactly what to say to some of these things. Because if you remember, many of them are on the record about 2016 and how it was inappropriate to have a foreign government interfere in an election. And that appears to be what exactly this president is asking China and other countries to do. Ambassador, you've known Bill Taylor, you've known Kurt Volker for years. Um, Ambassador Sunderland, someone you don't know. The president cited his text with the no quid pro quo. Um, tell us, is that going to be enough of a text um, to help the president get out of this? Well, it shouldn't be. I mean, goodness sakes. I mean, the, the facts are just clear as day, as Brett said. Uh, just saying that it's not a quid pro quo does not make it not a quid pro quo. I think he was putting that on the record for a reason. And as you rightly pointed out, this is a Trump supporter. He has the job because he gave a lot of money uh, to candidate Trump in the inauguration. He's a real estate developer. He is not a, a diplomat. And I have no idea. I think it is an important question. Why is he involved in this? He's the EU ambassador. He has nothing to do with Ukraine, and yet he's going to the inaugurational ceremonies in Ukraine, and now he's on all these texts. Um, to, to the point of the other uh, two ambassadors, I do want to underscore what Brett said. Uh, ambassador Taylor here is a hero. Uh, when you read these texts, he's obviously very uncomfortable uh, with this play that they are concocting. He is listening to the Ukrainians. He understands that they're uncomfortable. Uh, and he threatens to resign in one of those texts. He said, if we're doing this, if we're tying military assistance to help President Trump win his reelection campaign, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right, but it's all on the record now, he says, in parentheses, I quit. That's an American standing up for American national interests. Uh, Anna, we know all of this because of the Volcker deposition, but there's other depositions yet to come. The ex-ambassador is going to be speaking next week. We don't know uh, if Gordon Sondland will. Any specific expectations from what's to come? I mean, I, th I think it's hard to make predictions. I certainly wouldn't have predicted that today we would have the smoking text. So I think the, the thing to think about is every day, we are peeling back the onion and there's reports and stories that are coming out from this testimony. And so each day, what happens with the inspector general, for example, what comes out after that hearing today, I think is going to be very important. And it's, it's just a drumbeat of stories that I think Republicans are going to have to have a hard time answering to next week. Uh, Ambassador, I want to share what the president said yesterday. 
insisting that when he spoke about China investigating the Bidens, it was just about corruption, not politics. Let's listen to it. China should start an investigation into the Bidens, because what happened in China is just about as bad as what happened with uh, with Ukraine. So I would say that President Zelensky, if it were me, I would recommend that they start an investigation into the Bidens because nobody has any doubt that they weren't crooked. Okay, a week ago, Karl Rove, uh, sort of a, a classic D.C. Republican, uh, said Joe Biden didn't do anything wrong here. Is the president, Brett, simply trying to change the narrative and say this is about corruption when it obviously isn't? Uh, again, Stephanie, it's just unbelievable to hear the, a president speak like this. I mean, he's talking about China, which is our number one global competitor, according to his own national security strategy. And it's also been reported that he's telling uh, President Xi that, look, I'm not going to say anything about Hong Kong because I don't want to interfere with uh, your internal issues using language that Xi would use. But I want you to interfere with my internal uh, political process. This is, I think Mitt Romney, what he said is absolutely right. It's wrong and appalling. Uh, anybody can see it. And particularly with China, this is our number one global competitor. The heart of President Trump's national security strategy is competition against China. And this gets to a larger point. There is no foreign policy going on right now. There's no national security process. On issue after issue, if you chip under below the surface, um, I think we are taking on increasing risk in the country from issue after issue. And um, what happened in Ukraine, there was a policy to provide assistance to the Ukrainian government, but there was a shadow policy coming out of the Oval Office uh, to, uh, to counter that. And that's going on across the government. Diplomats on the front lines who are interfacing with governments, including adversaries and competitors like Russia and China, uh, don't know what the policy is because you don't know what the president is going to do from day to day. Um, so this is really taking on risk for our country and our national security. It's very serious. And uh, there's just no defense for what we're hearing the president say out of his own mouth. Anna, are Republicans really going to try this defense uh, that this is so swampy and so unethical? Surely voters don't like the swamp. They don't like to hear stories uh, like sons of politicians uh, getting paid on the side. But it's absolutely not unique to Joe Biden. And can this White House actually make these claims, given you've got Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner working in the White House, Rudy Giuliani's son worked there, Barr's son-in-law works at the White House. I haven't even gotten into uh, the trademarks Ivanka Trump has gotten from China, the foreign business his sons do. The list goes on and on. You can't really point to, to Joe Biden's situation and say that's the swamp when you're living amongst the frogs and the toads. Yeah, I think it's a hard argument for them to, them to make. It's clearly what the president is is trying to do, saying he's there just to route out corruption and any corruption, uh, you know, that, that's happening on American soil or, or abroad. I, I think the question is going to be, do Republicans continue to uh, defend him in that way? And so far, I, I think the sign today is that quietness, that silence is an important change and, and tone. Even some of the president's biggest offenders, Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, you haven't been hearing them talk on camera as much as they had been previously, where they had the whistleblower. They were trying to make a lot of different arguments about why the whistleblower wasn't, uh, you know, why it wasn't a legitimate transcript and things like that. But now you have the president on the South Lawn of the White House to asking China to interfere and putting, you know, in the same sentence, a couple sentences later, talking about the trade deal that we, the U.S. is having with China. So there, there's so many mounting pieces of evidence. I think it's going to be hard for them to continue along those lines of defense. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.